ส้มกรุบไพรมัดระบอกวิโอเอในทั้งไงนี้ยืงเบียนเกตยุคได้บานลูกใส่อาณาเบอร์เกอร์อัตยตะประเทียนสาเพียบอันตรายเจี๊ยดสำหรับเซวากรรมในยูเจ็ดหนึ่งเจี๊ยอัตยตะประเทียนในกรมสายจีบดำเบียนอัตโปลมุ้ยในสารดำเร็จชุมวัฒน์กาพลับโดดำใบจี้จุ่มเนี่ยลูกใส่บ้านอันเจริญเตอร์ประเทศกัมพูชีขนมปีทำไมทำไมกันหลอมวันนี้ให้บ้านสนะเนื้อตีนุจิจานซาปดาดำใบสวายยศปีสถานเพียบระบอกการมกอลูกใส่โจมขนมสตูดิโอระบอกวิโอเอในทั้งไงนี้ดำใบใจดำเล็กในกาโรคเฮยระบอกลูกใส่ปีดำน้าตุสนะกันนู่ Welcome to V O A Anna Thank you for having me Yeah Thank you for dropping by Can you tell us um, when did you go to Cambodia and how long did you stay there and if possible if I may who did you meet over there Okay, well, I first went to Cambodia about 10 years ago um, as a labor leader on a fact-finding tour to see what had happened to um, cam workers in Cambodia after the free trade agreement that had ILO standards. And so I visited it 10 years ago, and I was traveling again and was anxious to see what had happened since and what the situation was for working people in Cambodia now. So you were in Cambodia at a time when workers' demand were very high and... Uh, and also at a time when police or authority crackdown is even more brutal than before and some even call say cruel. And so can you tell me uh, were the demands or are the demands from those workers too much to meet? No, I, I was surprised to see that the working, um, the living situation for workers had not improved in the last 10 years. I had expected that after the original organizing and, and and efforts for workers to be able to stand up and have a voice, that their living situation would have improved over the last 10 years, but in fact it hasn't. And so, you know, it's very clear, the ILO says that to have a, for a worker to have a frugal life, it takes at least $157 a month. In reality, um, Cambodian garment workers are paid less than $100 a month, and so their lives are very, you know, for 48 hours a week. So they are struggling to get by. You see workers um, trying to have their voices heard, demanding $160, which is a fair wage. And I think that we really need to understand that for $160 a month for a garment worker, they can have a, only a frugal life. Mm -hmm. It does not cost the c consumers that much more money to make sure that they have a, a frugal life, let alone maybe we could something, someday do more so that they could have a decent life. So meaning that, uh what have the big brand doing uh, so, uh, the impact so far? So I, I was um, struck by how the government has been so repressive to workers in their, in their efforts to speak up and to organize. Mm -hmm. In January, workers were shot. Um, then work, workers' leaders were arrested and then put in jail. Um, workers have no place to be able to demonstrate or speak out. The big brands, I was impressed with the big brands and the global unions. The global brands and the global unions jointly sent a letter um, to the Prime Minister on January 17th calling for an investigation and prosecution of the government forces that had used excessive force, that they called for the beginning, uh, the establishment of a real trade union law mm -hmm. with a transparent the process. They called for a real bargaining uh, around wages and also for lifting of the min minimum wage to a decent wa wage. So the big brands sent a letter and made some statements, but they do need to do much more. What else? Can you give one example of a few? What well, is you know, it seemed quiet since then, right? Well, I mean, the only re it's certainly quiet on part of the big brands, um, but the reason it's quiet in Cambodia is because any time a worker tries to speak out, they are, you know, beaten um, or prohibited from speaking. You know, I was in Cambodia on um, April 20th and I went to Freedom Park. Now, Freedom Park is the only park where people are allowed to, t to demonstrate and speak and rally. And now that's prohibited. So Freedom Park in Phnom Penh, the one place where people are supposed to be able to demonstrate, it is now, you know, people are met with security troops, um, preventing them from being on the park or from them speaking. I was there on the 20th, I was there on the 21st, when the um, security, the military or the police, whatever they were, were directed to use batons on innocent bystanders and photographers. I was there on um, May Day, mm. when again they used their batons and beating people, just because they wanted to be able to speak out. And, um, and so I think, you know, it's a basic um, right for workers to be able to freely assemble and speak freely. Yeah. and to. Um, to demonstrate, to um, strike, and that's being denied them. And I think it's time for the big brands and the unions again to not only speak out, but to go to, go to Cambodia and say, we think 
that not only do they need to be able to be respected in the law, but the big brands should make a very clear statement that it's time to raise the minimum wage, that they can afford that, the brands can afford that, and that they should make sure that the, um, that the bargaining takes place to have that happen. Yeah, talking about the working uh, condition and a low pay, you are uh, credit as one of the champion for equal pay for women especially, and the country that you just visited in, the, in that industry, 70 plus of the workforce are women. Right. So, and with all this situation where uh, crackdown is very uh, violent, so how much this, does this touch your, your feeling uh, personally? I saw, um, I went to a, um, a memorial service on, on May Day, on May 1st, for the workers who had been shot and killed on January 3rd mm -hmm. and 4th demonstration. And there were all these young women, young, young women, who work in the, in the garment um, factories were there um, trying to demonstrate and speak out. I think that we owe that, we have a responsibility to make sure that the factory workers treat them fairly, that there really is a collective bargaining. Because it's not just about lifting up those women, it's lifting up their children, lifting up their families. And I feel very strongly about that in this country. I feel very strongly about it, passionately about it in Cambodia. And I believe that global labor leaders like me and others need to rally support. Um, and the big brands have a responsibility that it is not just the cheapest product. We need to be able to make sure that people who are manufacturing our goods are doing it in a way where they can live a decent life. And right now, women and, and all workers in, in Cambodia are underpaid and struggling to get by. When we talk about we, this also includes the U.S. government. So how much leverage does the U.S. government have in Cambodia right now? And if we ever use this leverage to a maximum, a maximum level? Well, I think this is a very important moment in Cambodia. Um, the government is becoming more and more repressive every single day, um, whether that it is the preventing people from speaking publicly at a park, to preventing workers from demonstrating at their factories, from implementing no um, fair trade union law of the transparent process. So they are becoming more and more repressive, beating people. It, um, we should step in now all, for all of the, the um, global unions, the global brands, and our governments need to make a very clear message to the government of um, Cambodia that this is not right and they will not support it. A lot of foreign aid goes into Cambodia. A lot of economic support goes into Cambodia. It's time that we make sure that that money goes to the workers, to the people of Cambodia, so that we can lift them out of poverty. I worry that if we don't do something that it will more violence will be sparked and that this is the moment that we should all put the spotlight on Cambodia before things get out of control. I think that there's something that we could all do if we all align ourselves to make a very clear message to the government of Cambodia that it's time that democracy is honored and respected, that workers' voice is honored and respected, and that the freedom to assemble and the freedom to negotiate is alive and well in Cambodia, which it is clearly not right now. And what about the union? Uh, please share your experience and how do you see union in Cambodia? Are they very well organized now compared to 10 years ago? And what, what anything go wrong? Why they are kind of bad negotiation, negotiation with the buyer or employer and the government kind of doesn't yield much uh, right. results so well, far? Well, I mean, one of the problems is that if you have a government that is um, not supporting collective bargaining, then the collective bargaining is going to be very hard to go. If the employers can get away with wor bad working conditions and um, paying the workers as little as possible, they will do it for as long as they have it. And when the workers' leaders are arrested because they encourage demonstrations and are locked away since January um, 3rd, it's really hard for leadership of the union to be able to keep on bargaining. So there's such a level of intimidation the government is clearly making, sending a clear message that if you speak up, if you demonstrate, if you go on strike, you will be beaten, shot, and locked up. I mean, that's, that's the message that is out there on the street. And so I think that's why it's really important for global brands, because they're the ones, they're in their economic, they say that peaceful um, bargaining is an important thing, that violence does not help economic security. They want labor, they want labor peace. They want, labor, they want industrial peace. If they really want industrial peace, then we need to have a government that supports workers' rights, workers' voice, and a real transparent labor movement so that we can have real bargaining. The brands also have to say, yes, you should pay more. It's time to raise the minimum wage. 
$100 is not enough. We need to raise the minimum wage for the garment industry, and then we need to figure out how to raise the minimum wage for workers across Cambodia. In Cambodia, they, I think they've campaigned a lot on this to get a uh, buyer to jump in. But from the U.S. side, uh, what kind of activities should be done uh, kind of to push the big brands to do more? I think, that, um, I think that we need to engage the big brands, both on um, leader to leader, but we also need to um, get students and others and the consumers involved. Because the reality is, it's penny, uh, pennies on the product. And they don't actually have to raise the price at all because their profit margin is so is sufficient enough to be able to raise the minimum wage. Now, I look at the Gap as a great employer who's t taking some great steps right now, at least in the United States. They just agreed to raise the minimum wage for their workers I mean, in the United States. And I think that brands like the Gap and others need to come together and say, we need to think about raising the minimum wage around the world. We need to think about our suppliers and what they're paying their workers. It's not just about what we do here. It's about what we're doing elsewhere in the world because if we really want to be able to have global peace and industrial peace, we also need to do it in a way that pe people can support their families. We've seen around the world when there is in growing and growing income insecurity, it leads to violence and it leads to social unrest. If we really want to be able to have violence stop, then we need to figure out a way to have economic peace too and economic justice. And that means lifting the floor so that people can feed their families, so the kids can go to school and learn, and so that they can have a better life. I might want to uh, get some of your observation or opinion on the political situation in Cambodia a little bit. There seems to be uh, the, the opposition party, the Cambodian National Rescue Party, tend to focus on this issue a lot, especially uh, the salary. So you think how serious uh, uh, the opposition in addressing all this concern from the workers right now? Well, I think that the, um, the Cambodian National Rescue Party put together a platform that really addressed the critical issues of people in Cambodia, um, from the minimum wage to clean water, to access to education, good education, to protecting their communities, um, to protecting their homes and their forests. So I think that they put together a platform that really was about that, but they seem very determined about supporting workers in their efforts to lift the floor to $160. I was at, um, I was at Freedom Park on um, April 20th and 21st. I was also at rallies on the 1st. And all of the leaders were speaking of a minimum wage of $160. On, uh, and there were lots of young people who were supporting it as well. There was a great visual on May Day of uh, young people who had used balloons to have 160 as the beginning of the march. And so I think that there is a lot of activity. There's also been lots of discussion um, on on um, April 20th, when Musakua, a member of the um, uh, of the Parliament mm -hmm. General Assembly, went to Freedom Park, she went there with to talk about $160 and why it was a fair rate. She went with facts and reports that had been done from the ILO about looking at Cambodian workers and what would it take to have a frugal life, even, where it uh, documented that it was $157. And so she went with facts. Mm -hmm. She also went with lotus flowers as a symbol of peace and was prohibited from speaking at the park, surrounded by helmeted troops and pushed and shoved a away. And this was a elected member of the government. Um, I was there on the first when she tried to also talk about $160. So I think that um, they have been very supportive of that. I thought that it was very significant that so many people went to the memorial service of the workers who were shot on um, January 3rd, and then the memorial service was on the 1st. So I've seen, a, I, I was very impressed with the leaders um, in their, not only in their words of support, but in their actions by going to the rallies and demonstrating for that. So before I let you go, uh, is there any light at the end of the tunnel where oh. we can see and uh, this basic issue as we speak uh, can be addressed anytime soon? Well, first of all, um, I thought that the, you know, the opposition parties came together um, about a year and a half ago and formed one party. Um, they are working well together. They organized an election where some say they really won if the votes had been counted.
but they, you know, took 44 percent of the votes that were counted. I understand that NDI did a study uh, and a poll and found that about 29 percent of the people were not allowed to vote. Um, if, that, if those votes had been voted and counted, that there probably would have been a different result. So obviously, there's a voice in, in Cambodia that's growing of workers across the country who really want change. They want, it, they want opportunity. They want a way of being having a Cambodia that's for them. And so I think that that's really exciting. I was, I was re impressed with the amount of um, activity on Facebook um, with young people communicating with each other. Um, and so that they, you know, you would be someplace and they would have heard what had gone on someplace else. So I think that there's a whole level of um, the internet that's enabled young people to become more involved. And I think that they're more hopeful. So I think that if the opposition party can can actually keep on moving forward. You know, they've called for a fair election. They've called for an early election. They've called for rules that would actually enable them to have democracy in the country and access to the radio and TV um, channels. I think that you will begin to see things change. I also think that if the global brands and the um, global governments come together and start exerting pressure on Cambodia, putting a spotlight on it, that I think that we can see significant change and that Cambodia will be a bright spot for the world. Thank you so much, Anna, for stopping by and sharing this very, very useful information with me. I was very happy to be here. Thank you.